Hello again, it's Thursday, July 9th, and it's day six. Yeah, I think so. The day six of the Tour de Fleece. This is Sarah from Yarn Lab Canada, and let's get spinning. So, since last night, I finished spinning up all of that merino that I had dyed, so I have it all on here in a single, and I'm getting ready to chain ply it, or Navajo ply it. Alright, so, so far in the Tour de Fleece, I've wound everything off into a center pole ball, and did a two-ply from a center pole, so plying from both ends. This time, I'm going to actually go ahead and pull this bobbin off put a clean bobbin on and do some Navajo plying to create a three ply yarn. And let's throw a clean empty bobbin on and here we go. Got a little bit of grease on my hand um, from oiling my bobbins. So that's on, throw my brake band on. And let's go ahead and thread my leader. So, I haven't done a ton of Navajo plying, so this is going to be maybe a little bit slower than I usually am. And I do also know that I have a tendency to break my, uh, break my yarns when I'm Navajo plying. So, let's get, let's find the end down here on this bobbin. So Navajo or chain plying, it's the same process that you would do when you're chaining with a crochet hook, only instead you are using your hands to chain uh, to create a three ply yarn. So plying, I'm going to go the opposite way. So to get started, I'm going to need to make a loop. And I'm just doing that, wrapping this up around here. So you can see I've got this loop, and I'm going to pull a loop through the loop, just like making a chain, so that when it comes down I've got three, three sort of threads or lengths going. So you can see now that I've got three threads going together, one of them's a loop and one of them's feeding off the bobbin, and when the loop gets small I just pull through again, and you just keep pulling through as you advance your plying. And it's kind of sort of a funky little hand dance to make something uh, continuous like this. So again, in slow motion, I've got a loop and I've got a single coming off the bobbin. And hopefully you can see this all right. I'm just pulling through the loop uh, and plying downwards. So this is taking my single, which was maybe in a lace weight, up to something closer to a worsted weight as a three-ply. The nice thing about a three-plied yarn versus a two-ply yarn is that you have a very sort of cylindrical or symmetrical yarn. So the two-ply yarns are more helical and you get, um, you get grooves. So just like uh, the Alpha DNA Helix, two-ply yarn has uh, grooves in it. Whereas the three-ply yarn um, has a, it's more of a cylindrical yarn. So it shouldn't take me too long today to, um, oh. so what just happened, stop me up, is an issue that I find uh, happens with the Lazy Kate attached to my Ashford Kiwi and uh, I'm going to zoom in and show it to you. Okay, so can you see what's going on here? My single feeding off the bobbin got itself wrapped around um, my sort of the connection between the two upright posts for my treadle. So this happens on the Lazy Kate coming from the wheel because the Lazy Kate's not tensioned, so sometimes it'll get spinning faster than your the bobbin will spin faster than you're actually spinning and so it'll unleash a lot of slack into the yarn and if you have slack it can swing over and get caught up in uh, 
in your wheel. And what you have to unfortunately do here is you have to go the opposite way until it all comes unwound. And there we go. It's a bit of a pain. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I don't recommend putting any oil on these parts because you wouldn't want to uh, stain your yarn up if it does get caught. So I don't have another Lazy Kate to have it separate from the wheel, but that's definitely a pro for getting a separate Lazy Kate um, or one with tension and a con, I guess, for the Ashford Kiwi built-in Lazy Kate. So now that my bobbin's starting to fill up, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about why I chose to Navajo ply this yarn. So because when I spun it, it kind of went through color gradients where you'd have a section of the blue and a section of the pink and a section of the green. If I had done a traditional two ply of the yarn or a traditional three ply of the yarn, you would end up mixing blues and pinks and greens as they twisted together, which would cause an overall muddying of the three colors. Now by Navajo plying it, you're plying within the same section, so you get a three ply of just the blue, you get a three ply of just the pink, you get a three ply of just the green, which instead of muddying out the colors, concentrates those colors and it takes it up to something brighter. So I'll just grab. So if you just compare, you know, from the plied yarn to the bobbin, the colors look more intensified in the plied yarn than they did on the bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and finish Navajo plying this today. That's probably all the spinning that I'm going to do for the rest of today. And while I do it, I'm going to continue watching some of my fiber hero Natalie Redding um, from Namaste Farms. And sometimes I just spin while watching my way through her video uploads on YouTube. And uh, that's it for today. So happy spinning. <laughs>